Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Nobody's Watching. We have a new season, a new battle pass and new theme music. Funky! Let's dive in. So, season 17, Age of Ravonix 360. I hope I said Ravonix right, no idea. Um, we've got a couple of new outfits like this one, which is cool. We've got a brand new blaster that we want to look at. Um, but apart from that, we've just got new rewards. Nothing really to write home about. But the new outfits and the new blasters look awesome. So let's take a look at the Ravonix 360. The Ravonix 360 is from Nurse Vortex line, which is a line of blasters that fire discs, not darts, which is essentially irrelevant for this game. It's a heavy style blaster with some very unique and interesting abilities. Let's have a look. The first one allows your dart disc to bounce to two other players. Um, it doesn't say by how much, but still you can shoot a whole team with a single shot, which is interesting. It has the ability to heal for 5% every time it hits a target, very similar to the Nerf Echo. And finally, it has a one in five chance to critically hit, which stuns and causes extra damage. Again, we don't know by how much or for how long. Okay, let's look at the blaster stats, bearing in mind that these are level 1 stats. First thing, auto shoot range of 32 meters, that's perfectly normal for a heavy blaster. Very fast priming speed of 0.22, almost analogous to the Mastodon, which has a very high fire rate. Coupled with a clip size of 30 means you're going to be shooting out darts very quickly. Damage and hit points are good, the healing's fine, the movement speed's a little low but to be expected for a heavy blaster. A dispersion of 3 is not great because that means this blaster is not going to be that accurate. Okay, let's have a quick nosy at the aesthetics. So this is the normal skin. As you can see, it comes with a couple of different ones. Here's the pink venom. I think this is gorgeous, but I really like the colour pink and purple. Um, and then this is the green envy, which comes in the battle pass. Looks badass. I'm not sure which I prefer. And then you've got your usual bronze, silver and gold which to be honest all look shit but they normally do. Okay let's just have another quick look at the battle pass before we compare some blasters. So usual rewards and as you'll notice there's the green envy I was talking about. Both the blaster and the skin are in the premium rewards so if you're free to play you won't get either of these. Right at the end of the battle pass we've got two new uh, outfits. We've got the disc master which is premium legendary and um, minus two dispersion to central blasters which is great, but I wish it was for heavy blasters or all blasters, but it looks cool. Um, apart from that, we have also got the free to play one, which is the Disc Lord. Now, I really like the look of this. Again, uh, minus two dispersion to center blasters does the same thing, but it's pink and black. I've already said I like pink, I like purple, I like black. I love that, but I'm not gonna unlock it for a while, unfortunately. So these are premium rewards, it costs money. It's £6 to unlock the battle pass, that's not too bad. You can pay £8 and unlock the first 15 steps immediately so you can get that Rivonix straight away, but that's pointless. And then when you get towards the end of the season, you're going to have nothing to unlock, which kind of sucks. So let's compare the Rivonix to other level 1 heavy blasters so that we can look at the significant differences. First, the Megalodon from the Mega Series. Most of the stats are very similar, however, the Megalodon has got a smaller clip by 10, it's got a lower range and a, a significantly longer reload time of 5 seconds compared to 2. Powers wise, this blaster has got scaling damage which resets when you reload, it's got that nice mega front shield that reduces damage, and finally slam fire which is fine. It's not as good though, it doesn't touch the um, Bivonix. Okay, let's have a look at the Judge, which I've previously looked at on this channel, albeit briefly. The damage appears lower, and so you remember it fires three darts at a time, so it's significantly higher. Um, it's got slower movement speed, it's got uh, a worse auto shoot range, and a painfully slow reload of seven seconds. Onto a crowd favourite, the Titan. So this is a favourite because it's got a massive drum and 50 darts, 20 higher. Um, it's got lower damage but twice the fire rate, it's um, slower and it's got a slower reload 
It's more accurate, but it does not have any knockback, which we've not talked about too much really. Um, but knockback is important. Okay, we'll move on to the Titan, which I don't see used that often, but it does see some play. A lot of its statistics are very similar to the Ravonics, uh, but some of the significant differences is a lower movement speed, a shorter auto shoot range, a longer reload time, and a greater degree of accuracy. So pretty balanced. Um, a lot of the stats on these heavy blasters are very similar at level one. Really, the heavy blaster that I use is the Megalodon, um, uh, sorry, the Mastodon, and. This is at level 11, so it's hard to get a really good comparison. But if we look at the statistics, some of the significant differences here are the reload speed, the knockback and the accuracy. Apart from that, it looks quite similar. However, it is that healing ability that I'm really interested in, in the Vortex. It may be a while before I unlock and upgrade the Ravonics to the point where I can see if it's actually a worthy replacement for the Mastodon, but I suspect that it might be due to its AoE and healing abilities, and um, it may even knock off the Echo, but that's for another video.